everyone, this is Cody Lee of BlackCatBooks.org, author of I, the Dragon, Cruel and Beautiful, Rabbit Hole, Loa and Frey, and the upcoming Jaw of the Dragon. So Metroid Prime Remastered has been a huge success on Nintendo Switch. Uh, I just went out today, and a lot of people I know have bought and played it. And I've checked the, the best sellers list on Nintendo Switch, the best selling com game on the console right now. You know, on Metacritic, you know, 95, you know, just one point lower than Elden Ring's 96, which is uh, a point lower than the original Metroid Prime release. So essentially what Metroid Prime is, is one of the best games ever made, re-released on Nintendo Switch, completely faithfully with completely built up visuals from the original version. So it essentially play looks and plays like a modern game. Actually, I would argue it looks looks and plays better than modern games, despite its age, because, you know, this was made during a time when video games were actually allowed to be video games. And essentially what this means, uh, for those of you in the Peanut M&M gallery, is that, is that Dead Space remake, the, the, the game that game journals, YouTubers, and shills were trying to push as, like, the absolute Kino remake of the year was absolutely blown out by Metroid Prime not even a couple of weeks after launch. You know, like, you know, but Dead Space Remake has all these problems that no one wants to talk about, from gameplay to balance changes, from, like, you know, uh, story changes, dialogue changes. There are all these, like, weird things about, like, Dead Space Remakes that, that are not faithful to the original. People are ignoring them, they're downplaying them, but they're not really talking about them. Metroid Prime, in comparison, is not only highly... Is not only highly faithful to the original, it's essentially the exact same thing, just with extremely well touched up visuals and, you know, some minor changes to the way the game plays. You know, the button layouts are different. Uh, it has gyro controls. It, it's just, there are just so many good things about Metroid Prime that it, it's really hard to imagine that anyone would play both and prefer Metroid Prime. And that kind of led me to uh, prefer Dead Space. Uh, prefer Dead Space, because Metroid Prime was just objectively superior. So, looking back on this, this this line of thinking that, like, Metroid Prime Remastered is clearly the better re-release of Dead Space, you know, the, the full $60 re-release that changed content and, and adjusted a game that already was overrated to begin with, that kind of led me down this interesting rabbit hole, something that I don't think a lot of people have picked up on, something that I don't see a lot of people discussing, and I think a lot of people haven't noticed, is that Metroid... Lately, among like you know uh, the gaming YouTuber scene, from like uh, analysts, from from critics, um, Metroid is seen as a relatively niche, unpopular Nintendo franchise. You know, something that only sells like maybe a mi a million units of release. And you know, compared to like something like Mario Kart, which is fifty million units, or you know, Animal Crossing to Splatoon, uh, Splatoon alone I think has outsold every single Metroid release combined. Uh, you know, Metroid does deserve that reputation. It's not as big as a lot of other Nintendo franchises. However, does that mean it's unpopular? Does that mean it doesn't sell well? No, the series is still very popular for what it is. But what I've realized in going back and actually looking through the numbers, Metroid Prime, the original release, actually outsold the original Dead Space. I... I was shocked when I heard this because Dead Space, you know, when I when I was growing up, like that was like the big niche scary game for mature gamers, right? This was like a huge success story. It was the big sleeper hit of like uh, 2008 or whatever. It was it was proof that like the PS360 was like you know a cut above what Nintendo was doing. They were putting out way better games than anything Nintendo could put out. Never mind the fact that like Metroid Prime 3 came out like a, earlier and was a lot better, but. Uh, you know, Dead Space was supposed to be this huge, phenomenal thing, and it sold about half as much as the original Metroid Prime did. And, you know, even, even if you take into account, like, the wider franchise's success, you know, like, where Dead Space went from there, uh, it falls way short of where Metroid has gone. And not only that, Metroid has a, long, a far longer history. You know, like, you know, it has... A dozen great games at this point. You know, you know, after Metroid Prime 3, we got like, you know, great games like Federation Force, like Samus Returns, like Dread, which is the best selling Metroid game ever at this point. And meanwhile, Dead Space has just not only fallen on hard times, become completely irrelevant. This remake was an attempt at like bringing back a dead, obsolete, irrelevant series. Whereas Metroid is like bigger than ever.
honestly. Like, I think with this remake, remaster, and considering how popular it is, like, I'm seeing a lot of people acknowledge that the, the days of wondering, like, oh, when's Metroid gonna come back? They're over. They're here! Okay? Like, we've gotten several great Metroid games over the past couple of years. Like, Metroid is no longer, like, can be considered a stagnant Nintendo IP, because we've gotten so many great games from the franchise lately. And uh, people are beginning to admit it to themselves. But, like, what they also have to admit is that, like, you know, games like Dead Space, games like Mass Effect, games like Halo cannot compete with Metroid. Like, uh, we are at that point, I think, where we might actually be able to see, like, a significant growth in the franchise. Uh, in part because of Nintendo's willingness to branch out into, like, new genres with the IP. Like, of course, we have, like, you know, the Prime formula with, like, you know, the first-person adventure, but more than that, I think we have the Federation Force, which I think is going to pull in a lot of normies long-term. I think, you know, Federation Force 2, when it gets made, you know, uh, with realistic graphics and stuff like that, you know, stuff that, stu uh, you know, a co-op action Metroid game, I think when that does get made and it does find its audience, I think that is actually going to be a very big draw for uh for casual audiences i think there's actually a lot of potential there because like when you get right down to it federation force is just um a halo co-op game re that's extremely fleshed out and has a lot more like depth like the mission design and like a, the general gameplay right right that's what federation force is it is a better halo and in that sense what we need to see it, it's very possible that it, it's very likely that Nintendo will eventually manage to take that idea and really, like, grow it into, like, a really successful spinoff game. In fact, uh, Metroid Prime 4 was confirmed uh, back in the day to have taken a lot of influences from Federation Force. So we might actually see a little bit of that in Metroid Prime 4, assuming that, like, you know, Metroid Prime 4 is good, which, which uh, by the way, is looking to be the case if, if Prime Remastered is, like, any indication of what Prime 4 is going to be like we might very well see Prime 4 be the best-selling Metroid game ever. You know, far outstripping anything Dead Space has ever done and kind of establishing itself as, like, the premier sci-fi franchise on Nintendo Switch for hardcore gamers. And that's, here's the thing. Uh, the thing that really gets my goat about this is, like, where is the enthusiasm? Where is the excitement? Where are, like, the YouTubers talking about, like, Metroid Prime Remastered and how, like, they've never discovered this game before and how, like... Uh, you know, they, they can't believe they've been missing out on it. Everyone I've seen is either damage controlling this game, Maximilian dude looking at you, or straight up ignoring it. You know, people like Angry Joe and like the, the, the typical crowd, you know, like these guys are like worshiping Dead Space, but they are ignoring the vastly superior franchise that did everything Dead Space did better years before, right? Like this game, Metroid Prime is like a one of the most critically acclaimed games ever made. And these people are still ignoring it. And I, I don't think they can keep getting away with this. I really don't. Assuming Metroid Prime 4 sells like 5 million units, you know, which is uh, very possible considering the popularity of Dread. I, I really am curious like how people like Joe are going to downplay it. You know, like I, I don't even know how they're downplaying like Metroid Prime, uh, Metroid Prime Remastered now. I don't even know how they downplayed Metroid Dread. Because I know they played it, and I know they, like, tried writing it off as, like, ooh, a lazy Nintendo rehash or something. But, like, uh, how, how often, realistically, can they keep doing this, right? How often, realistically, can they keep, like, ignoring all these great Nintendo games in genres they claim to enjoy? You know, Fire Emblem for strategy, Metroid for, like, sci-fi horror action games. Like, uh, you know, Mario platformers uh pikmin you know, you know like you know I, I have a very hard time believing that like you know these these uh these youtubers wouldn't be interested in these games if they actually gave them a shot but like more and more it just feels like they're not even bothering trying you know it feels more and more that they're more interested in like getting getting those sponsorship deals from raid shadow legends or multiverses <laughs> rather than like actually talking about games that they actually care about and like i think metroid prime remastered is going to be like a very big tipping point between like what actual players are talking about and playing and what the game journalists and the youtubers are talking about and playing because like what i'm seeing 
from where I'm sitting is that like Metroid Prime Remastered is a huge success, you know, far better, I think, than, than most other Nintendo release re-releases in recent memory. And of course, like Skyward Sword HD very, did very well and like did a lot to revitalize that specific game, which was like very strongly written off by the gaming uh, journalists at the time. Uh, Prime, the original Prime was also written off by game journalists. This is another point that I'll probably get, get into it for another video, but uh, Prime, Prime 1 was heavily downplayed by gaming journalists by by complaining about the lack of multiplayer and how it wasn't enough like Halo. And 20 years later, the game is vindicated as like one of the best selling games ever made. You know, like it sells a ton of units. It's, it's become super popular. And I, I really wonder, I really have to wonder how common is this going to be going forward with these old Nintendo games? We're getting to the point where like you can't really deny it anymore. Like, it's getting more and more difficult to, like, downplay this. It feels more and more as if, like, if you write off a Nintendo game, you try to say it's no good, it's irrelevant, it's not going to find an audience, it's not going to be popular, they're just going to re-release it 20 years later, and it's just going to get, it's just going to become a beloved classic, you know? Like, we've seen this happen with a handful of titles already. You know, stuff like Link's Awakening, stuff like Skyward Sword HD, uh, stuff like, uh, you know, Pikmin's been re-released a couple of times. Like, these are games that were heavily downplayed when they first came out, right? That were ignored or, like, you know, shunted to the side or, like, uh, considered to be, like, you know, poor spin-off games. But then, like, eventually they find their audience and that audience is willing to to talk and hype them up. Uh, you know, Bat and Kaido's Origins. Uh, I've never... I, I've gone on record several times saying that I never expected that game to be re-released ever because of how niche it was. But because of people like me who genuinely enjoy that game, uh, I consider it my favorite JRPG ever, actually. Uh, it's getting re-released this summer. You know, a game that, like, probably sold, like, what? Half a million units at best? Like, the, uh, is actually getting re-released. And like you know, it remains to be seen if it's, this is going to be a good re-release because I've heard I've heard rumors that they're actually removing the voice tracks, uh, the English voice, the voiceovers for that game, the dub, and that like really will ruin the entire entire experience for me. I, I think if they uh, if they if it's only Japanese voices, but we'll have to see we'll have to see uh, if that's true or not. But um, yeah, um, the fact is. The fact is, this Nintendo Direct was really interesting because a lot of the most hype announcements, a lot of the stuff that people are getting like rabbit over and like really getting excited for are re-releases, are remakes, are like ports of old content. You know, like over the past weekend, I've been mostly been playing a, a ton of like Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games. And I, I think that just goes to show you just how strong of a brand Nintendo has, um, has built up over the years. You know, there are like new players right now playing Mario and Luigi for the first time. There are players, you know, discovering Super Mario Land, uh, the original Kirby, Link's Awakening, the original, like uh, Wario Land 3. Like these games, you know, uh, have been forgotten by history for a, a, by a, for a good chunk of the population, right? People don't talk about Wario Land anymore. People don't talk about like the Super Mario Land games. And that's very much by design because like they weren't supposed to be as popular as they were. Right, you were supposed to be playing like the Sega Genesis games and the play the PlayStation stuff, and like getting excited for like the new Doom or whatever. You weren't supposed to be like getting excited over Super Mario Land Two, really. But uh, the thing is, people still bought those games. People still played those games, and the people who played those games understand that these games do hold value. These are a lot of fun, even if they're not like the best, literally the best games ever made, like Metroid Prime. These games do have an audience, and they will reach more and more players as the years go by. 